episode 89. You are listening to the new Glam Gal podcast, the podcast where style meets confidence. Conquer the frustration of trying on clothes and learn to dress and love the body you are in. There are no size or weight requirements here. I'm your host, Miss J. Join me, won't you? Hey, Glam Gals, welcome back to the podcast. We are going to go back to our regularly scheduled programming, meaning we're returning to the topics of style and beauty, my two favorite topics in the world. Over the last few weeks, I have heard from so many of you about your beauty and style routines being interrupted. You can't go to your hairdresser. You can't get your hair dyed or your hair cut or your hair set. You can't get your nails done or filled. You can't get your eyelashes done. You can't get them extended. You can't get your eyebrows done, your face threaded, any number of little beauty things that may seem insignificant, perhaps even trivial. I have a client who lives in South Africa and she's unable to purchase beauty items that she has run out of. Who knew a simple eyeliner can actually mean so much? I myself am running out of foundation, and I usually switch my foundation colors during warmer months, so there's really no way for me to test a new foundation color on my skin until I can physically walk into a store again. Those little things, they seem so insignificant until they're not. So here's what I want to first offer all of you, a mindset tool, a tip, maybe a thought you can borrow. It's neither insignificant or trivial that you are missing out on your beauty routine. The fact that you feel a little sense of loss or that you feel some worry over it is nothing to shame yourself about. The fact that you want to go get your toes and nails done and you're missing the ritual of that is not trivial or insignificant for you. The current climate is going to affect all of us in different ways. And I want to offer some thoughts from the 1940s when women just like you and I had to go through rationing. Eventually shampoo ran out for them. They had to melt down their lipsticks into one good solid tube. And then it was a mishmash of colors and they made do. Some of them even started using natural products like beetroot to dye their cheeks or tint their lips or give them a little color on their eyes. They used boot polish as mascara. They made it work. Now, I'm not suggesting you resort to that same thing. But I'm letting you know that very amazing women, just like you and I, also missed their beauty routine. And there was a war on. But they still created some sense of beauty rituals for themselves with whatever they had on hand. They knew that this was an integral part of their day, getting ready. A lot of them were getting ready to work in factories. We're asking ourselves to get ready to stay at home. So somehow it feels less significant. But I want to let you know that whatever crisis you're facing, either now or in the future, it's neither trivial or insignificant or silly to want to look your best, whatever you're facing. There's two quotes in particular that stood out to me during my research for a book that I'm writing. And I wanted to offer them to you here because I think they would be really useful to lend some perspective to this. One is a quote from Vogue in 1942. It stated that makeup is cherished, a last desperately defended luxury. There's a second quote from Yardley's. It's a 1940s advertisement for makeup. And it says, to work for victory is not to say goodbye to charm. For good looks and good morale are about the closest of allies. I mean, really think of that. Good looks and good morale are closest of allies. You're actually lending yourself 
to the fight for victory when you have good morale. Now, I know that may sound silly, like really good morale from some lipstick. Yeah. How you show up every day affects your morale. It affects the morale of the people around you. That may just be the family that you see inside your house, the people you interact with on Zoom calls or whatever virtual meeting room you're meeting in. I mean, really think about that. How you show up affects your morale. It affects the morale of others. Good looks and morale matter. How you show up to your everyday life matters. I don't think it's trivial to want to look your best. And what I'm finding in all of my conversations with you is that perhaps for some of you, this is the first time you're seeing yourself in a more natural state. This is the first time in a long time that you found out what your actual hair color is these days. You're actually finding out what your natural arch of your eyebrow looks like without the coloring, without the plucking, without the threading. You're realizing maybe how hairy you really are. A little underarms, a little chin hair, a little situation happening. Like you're actually seeing yourself as yourself, unplucked, untweezed, undyed for the first time in a really long time. You may not recognize yourself. This may be a hard transition for you in so many ways. And this is sort of the final straw for some of you. I get it. I'm here for you. I totally understand. Now I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and some advice that I got from my sister who is a hairstylist. and Things she would like all of you to know out there. But really, the thing I want you to take away from all of this is it's not silly. And I totally understand. And this is an opportunity, perhaps, to realize how much of a role all of that beauty and style is playing in your life. And that it's okay if it's taking a large role. It's okay if it's an integral part of boosting your morale. And that those morale boosters matter. And to do our very best in making mend and making do Yes, with what we have on hand, but taking a step back and reflecting that, yeah, no, this is important to us, and that's totally okay. Now, in terms of practical style homework, what I have for you today is a message from my sister, the hairstylist. Please, please, please do not use box dye. You can use semi-permanent hair color, but realize you're going to have a myriad of colors in your hair. If you have grays, you're going to get yellowy grays plus the semi-permanent dye, plus whatever dye was there, plus your natural root color. And it might be a hot mess for your hair colorist in the future. So do her a favor. Maybe just let it grow out for now. Leave it alone. I have the same message from your nail gal, whoever does your nails. She does not want you picking off your gels. She does not want you picking off your acrylic nails. Let it grow out, my darling. Let it grow out. Now, if you're adventurous and you want to pluck your own eyebrows, I would just say stay as close to the line that whoever does your eyebrows in the past, stick as close to that line as possible. Don't over pluck. In fact, don't use a teeny tiny handheld mirror to pluck your eyebrows. Use a larger mirror so you can get a sense of the bigger picture and you're following as closely as possible the line that is already there. For those of you who get eyelash extensions and you're feeling a little naked, please do not adventure with at-home kits if you are not used to it. You might tear out the eyelashes you have. This might be an opportunity again to let it grow out. For those of you who are running out of makeup, I have a few tips for you. And it does not include boot polish. Some of the items you already have can double up. For example, if you have a really thick black eyeshadow, a very, very teeny tiny brush with a point dipped in some water, patted so it's damp, and dipped in your eyeshadow can sort of second 
as eyeliner in a pinch. If you need to use blush and you're running out of your favorite color, a little bit of lipstick rubbed in the right place will do in a pinch. If you're running out of foundation, maybe strategically place the foundation that is left over the spots that actually need coverage. You might find you don't need as much foundation as you've been wearing. Only certain spots in your face could use a little coverage. And at the end of the day, remember, makeup might be the last defended luxury, but it's definitely worth defending. So your mission, Glam Gal, should you choose to accept it, is to remember that style and beauty are not trivial. They're not frivolous. They're an integral part of keeping up morale and fighting the good fight every day. It's important to your health, both mental and physical. It's important to your health, both mental and physical. In a pinch, double up on those makeup products. And in a pinch, consider the possibility that you can definitely just let it grow out. All right, let's get it, Glam Gals. Miss J out.